No. All right. Well, I've been putting this off long enough. Let's make another tutorial. Okay, let's see what we got here. Grappling hook, rolling lisp, uh, combo attacks, A star pathfinding. Yeah. You know what? Let's do something entirely different. Let's just make a game. Instead of uh, doing a tutorial this week, I'm just gonna make a game from scratch and you guys can watch me do it. Now uh, this is entirely off the cuff, I've done zero planning so let's see how this goes. Alright, we're gonna make a new frame and um, we need a plan, you know? All games need a plan. We also need a folder so let's go ahead and make a new folder. I'm gonna call this new game. All right. Let's do some planning. I'll make a new text document. We'll call this story. Let's do a little brainstorming. All right, so, hmm. Uh, All right, we got ourselves a story here. Let's make a little bit of a file structure, just so uh, this is easier to organize. We'll do this, the art. Oops, do that new shortcut. And we'll have sound effects. And just in case we need it, a data folder. This is technically all data, so we'll throw that all in the data folder. And uh, we will say, you know, saves. Just in case that's something we put in the game. No idea what we're going to do there, though. I actually haven't thought about this at all. All right. What kind of game do I want to make? Okay, so I'm going to make this a low-res game because low-res means less work for me. Um, size of my grid is going to be 16 by 16 because that's tiny. Look at that. That's going to be the size of all of our... Uh, art pieces and art tiles and whatnot and I guess I'm gonna make this a, just like a weird top-down game so let's go ahead and insert an object throw this in this is an active object gonna be our player um, 16 by 16 now I like to just make all my stuff is poorly sized let me resize everything anyway I like to make uh, all my stuff real simple at first just boxes and whatnot so our player is gonna be a blue box Looks good. Gonna rename the dude as player. Um, yeah. So, that's what I'm gonna do. Now I'm gonna insert a backdrop to collide with. Boom. Also needs to be 16 by 16. <clears throat> Alright, so we're doing really low res here. Oh wait, I wanna make this an obstacle. Not sure that's gonna be necessary. Um, yeah, do some art. Okay, that's uh, that's my my block, my bricky block. So we're just gonna paint this sucker in. Actually, I should probably name it. I right, just paint some backdrops in. I think that the uh, the frame, or not the frame rather, but the screen is a little big. So let me resize it. I'm gonna half size this. It's gonna be tiny. So we're gonna do 320. Yes, by uh, 240. Let's take a look at that. <clears throat> That's gonna be the size of my screen that works very well for a super low res game I'm also gonna go to the frame here and change the background color to black Liking it uh, these need like a boundary though. I'm not liking the fact that they are not proper blocks mm, We'll do left and bottom better okay now 
I recommend saving religiously, so I'm going to do that right now. I'm going to go back to my desktop, and I'm going to stick this in my new game folder. Boom. We're going to call it new underscore game. All right, so this is just going to be my basic room, so I don't need it to be too complicated. I'm going to use this to test. Um, it's always best to, uh, to set up a prototype and just try to get your, uh, your basic game mechanics ironed out before you get too complicated and then you have to go back and edit lots of stuff. That's why I like to stick things on an initial frame. Um, it's actually best to get your game all ironed out on one frame so you don't have to fix a lot of crap which actually is a big problem with fusion because they don't have child frames and they're gonna have that in fusion 3 which is gonna be awesome which means that you can have a parent frame and you can do all your coding on that and the child frames will have inherit the code from the parent frame and that means all you gotta do if you have a mistake an error or a glitch you just fix the parent frame fixes everything but unfortunately in fusion 2.5 that is not the case that means we have to freaking go into every single frame if there is a mistake and fix it which is a pain in the butt, as everyone should know. Um, but you know that won't be a problem in the future. All right, so going to do some coding. Let me uh, let me insert a group of events. I'm going to call this player movement, um, and this is just going to be a uh, top-down game. So, excuse me. Let's do some inputs with the keyboard. We'll have an upon pressing key, and it'll be right. And all I'm going to do is set the position of. Uh, Set the x-coordinate of the player object to its current x-coordinate plus uh, 16. Let me see if that works. Look at that. But we can go in the wall. That's fine, though. Um, I also want to uh, let you hold it in. So, uh, I also want you to be able to hold in the key. So we will say the keyboard repeat while key is pressed. Right. Also, though, we want to limit this condition so it doesn't happen constantly, or just fly off the screen. So let's uh, let's do that this way. We will say limit conditions. We're going to restrict actions for about uh, I don't know what do you guys think about 30 milliseconds, and then the same thing is going to happen. So I'm just going to drag that down. Now we're going to hold it in and see if this is any better. Oh, it double it double popped, double popped. Hmm. Let me move those around, see if that changes anything. Does not. That's that's a problem. Okay, we're gonna use a flag. Let's go ahead and find out if a flag is off, and that's flag zero. And we're gonna do that on all of these. <clears throat> so if it's off, uh, you can move, right? So we will set the flag on after we move. And that's flag zero. So what this means is uh, when this flag is on, you cannot move. So that'll only let one of these trigger instead of both because it's setting the flag on. Um, and then when we're done with, with the movement, we are going to set up an always condition at the bottom that turns the flag back off. Set off flag zero. That's gonna let us uh, only do one of these since both these are triggering and was moving two spaces. Looks good. I think that should be a little faster though when you hold it in. So we will edit that and change that from 30 milliseconds. I'm gonna make it, I don't know, 10. No, not one. That was that was wrong. 10 milliseconds. Yeah, I like it. Okay. Um, now we need to set up collisions. So let me think about this. We don't ever need to be in a wall. So if we're in a wall, that means we're in the wrong spigot spot. So let me think. Hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, I could all here. Here's what I'm gonna do. This this might not work, but I'm gonna try it anyway. I'm gonna set up two values. This might not be the best way to do this, but this is the way I'm gonna do it. So we're gonna say. Uh, how should I call this? It's like the this is the x and y position before you move. So uh, it's not the initial, so it's not a knit x and y. It's just like previous x and y. Uh, we'll call it current x and current y. Kinda, kinda what they are. All right, so we will set up an always event at the top here. 
so that this happens every time it loops. And what we're gonna do is set the alterable value of current X and current Y to the X and Y position of our object. So current X is gonna be the X coordinate and current Y is gonna be the Y. There we go. All right, so those have been plugged in. Uh, and then we're moving, okay. We don't wanna update that yet. Because what we want to do is, if we have collided, um, we want to set them back to the current x and current y. So we can do that at the very end here. We'll find out if this object, our player rather, it's not just an object, is overlapping a backdrop. Okay, if that is the case, which should never be, we don't want them to go into backdrops, then we're going to uh, set the position to the value of the x-coordinate and y-coordinate to the values that were saved, current x and current y. So let's do that again. Uh, set the position y-coordinate and that's gonna be the value of current y. Now, if my logic is correct, this should work. Flag is off, set the position, yeah. So we should not go into the wall. It might, might actually go in the wall. Whoa, why did it do that? Why did it? Why did it do that? Current set current x position to current x. Set y position to current y. Always set current x to x. Oh, we have a error. We set current y to current y. Let's edit this. Set current y to the position y coordinate. That kind of stuff happens a lot when you're making games. That's why I recommend uh, testing every single iteration. All right, you see it. Uh, it stopped moving. Perfect. Let's save because I like to save religiously in case uh, my power goes out or, you know, I don't know, someone unplugs my computer. Okay, so this is like the basic logic of our game. It's all working out good. Um, all the directions are going to be, they're going to they're gonna be the same way. I'm actually going to insert a uh, comment to kind of separate this so that it's easier to look at. Directional inputs. Boom. Um... And then I'm gonna close it off here just with a white comment to create a space. That way it's easier for me to figure out what I'm doing. I know I gotta add all the directions here. Uh, two lines for each one. So I want a sound effect to play whenever I move. So let's grab a sound effect. Let's make it with chip tone. This is a pretty good little, uh, little program. We need a blip sound. Ugh, that was horrible. That one's not bad. Let's, let's change the... Uh, kind of wave it is. I need something softer. Eh, that's not bad. Eh. Just one, that's pretty good. Okay, let's see if we can soften that a bit. I like it. Okay, we need, uh, I'm gonna put it as mid like middle C somewhere as my uh, basic sound. We're going to modulate this. So I'm going to save the wave and I'm going to put it in the new. Where did I put my folder? Um, where is it? I am the most disorganized person on the planet, guys. I'm sorry. Shoot. Oh, there's new game. And this is a sound effect. And this is player move. Okay, we also need a sound effect when we hit the wall. That's no. There we go. Perfect. I like it. Um, <coughs> player hit wall. Not waka la la. Wall. Done. Okay. Shoe. These are the same. So I'm going to delete this because we're going to edit this a bit. And I'm just going to drag it down. I'm going to insert a uh, sound effect to play. So play sample. Okay. Um, let's browse it from a file. Please just. Remember my folders. This is annoying. New game, boom, data, sound effects, player move. Okay, so we're gonna play it every time, every time the player moves. Let's check that out. All right, so, uh, but we also want to modulate this sound effect. So we're gonna go to sample, set sample frequency. And that is the player move. And I'm going to set it to um, 50,000 plus 
a random 50,000. That should give us 50,000 to 100,000. Let's see if that works. It does, but it's a little high. So we're going to have to change that a bit. We're going to set it to 30,000. 7. 70,000. That, that gives us the full range, and it'll give us a lower range of sound. Still really high. Maybe we don't want uh, to have it play at such a high register, so maybe we don't want to get to the full 100,000. So let's uh, let's say 30,000 plus a random 30,000. Let's just go crazy. Let's just let's just go nuts here. We'll say a random. Say the lowest register will be 10,000 and it'll be a random 50. Not sure I like that blip sound, but whatever, it's fine. All right, we're gonna drag all this stuff down. Okay, now I need to play the sound effect whenever I overlap um, the backdrop. So let's so sample, play sample. And it was player hit wall. Let's see if that works. I don't want to play the sample. Let's see if we can just stop the sample. Sample, stop sample. This might not work. And we're going to stop the move sample. and then play the hit wall sample. So they shouldn't be playing over each other now. Perfect. Dude, I am a genius. Let's save our work thus far. Now we just need to uh, move uh, all these. We gotta have all of our directions. So let's copy and paste and edit. This is gonna be left. And for left, we wanna do the same thing, except we're gonna change the position to uh, minus 16. I'm gonna fast forward all this because this is really obvious what I'm doing here and I don't feel like showing anybody. See you when I'm done. 20 minutes later. <laughs> all right, so it is done. Uh, that bit is done, but that is flipping annoying. Which is cool. That's fine. I'm, uh, this game's gonna be weird. All right, let's insert a new object. This is gonna be our player sprite. Player sprite. Um, because actually, we're gonna call it SPR underscore player. That way, that the uh, when we organize things, we can see all the sprites. They'll be right next to there because they'll, they'll all be starting with SPR. All right, so this uh, this needs to be doesn't need to be the same size because we're not gonna check collisions with it. I'm gonna use this as the guy's baseboard. His, his feet, and that way he can overlap backdrops a bit. You'll see what I'm talking about. Um, all right, so he can be taller than he need, than the sprite, like so. Yeah. All right, so um, here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna make this game a little weird, so why not? We're gonna have this guy strike a new pose every single time the player moves. He's gonna be static though. He's always going to face down because I don't feel like drawing all the directions. And every single time the player moves, he's just going to make a really weird pose. We're going to have like 20 of them or something. Um, let's go ahead and make the player baseboard not visible at start. And um, we'll, we'll go ahead and put the animations under the movement as well. That's fine. Time to get down to drawing. Here we go. Hmm. Give this guy a big round head. We have a black background, so we don't really need um, we don't need an, a black outline. That would be redundant. This game's gonna have really weird and bad art. Let's make the guy orange. I don't know. It feels like a good color for this guy. Okay, he's gonna be orange. 
Let me uh, kind of shore this up a bit. Let's give him some feet. This is his default position. some eyeballs. Oops. Make them less square. And uh, give them some pooples. You've got some pooples right there. Some pooples. And... Uh, I like them. Okay, let's give them a, a, a mouth. And you know what? We're gonna make this a tie. He has a tie. He's like, he's like, you know, he's a professional type of a guy. Does that look like a tie? Yeah, it kind of looks like a tie. Okay. There's our player. Love him. He looks great. Let's go ahead and have him always follow along with that object. So, uh, with the baseboard object. So, we're going to stick that down here on this always event where we set the flag off. We're going to set his position as well. So, we're going to set his x coordinate to the position the x coordinate of this you know what now i'm just gonna i'm just gonna kind of play loose and fast with this we're gonna just gonna set his position and we're gonna line it up with this guy um yeah that should work i just need to make his i mean we'll, we'll find out hold on let me see what that looks like okay he's overlapping the ground a bit Okay, he's popping into the ground. Why is that happening? Let's think about that. Set internal flag zero offset the position. Yeah, let's re let's uh, switch the order of these. Boom. That should fix the problem, I think. Yep. God, that is that is just awful. I'm gonna have to switch that sound effect to something a little more interesting. I want him to be a little higher up on it. Like that. I want him to really overlap the backdrop a bit. There. So that creates the illusion that he is, uh, you know, in a 3D space. Okay, now we need to animate the guy, so I'm gonna go make a bunch of weird animations for him, a bunch of weird pictures. <laughs> I like it. All right, so he's just <laughs> this is going to be making really weird movements. Kinda looks a little small in this in this one, but whatever, it's fine. All right, his tie is down here. I like that animation, so I'm gonna copy that one uh, and just flip it. <laughs> it looks awesome. I love it. All right, let me see what else should he be doing. Let's grab his head copy it and I'll just drop it in here what's uh Go ahead and throw that in here. No, I said copy the picture. Copy the picture, throw the picture in. Um, boom, upside down in that one. Except, if he was upside down, obviously, his tie would be in his face. So that's what we're gonna do. There. 
Um, I really like these, so I'm actually going to use this as a more common. Oh, that looks weird. Um, I'm gonna make this a more common uh, option so that the majority of them will be him flailing around like a goober like that, kind of like, ah, you know. That one kind of sucks. Okay, let's get some more of these. Kind of running out of poses here. Okay, we're just gonna uh, clip off these last two and I'm gonna see if that works. So we have, two, three, four, five, six, we have eight frames. We do not want this to animate though. <clears throat> and every time we, we press the button, we want to set it to a random animation frame. So animation, change, animation frame and that's random eight that should do us let's go ahead and copy that to each one and let's see if that looks good let me make that a little bigger so I can see it oh it's not set to stretch to fill um, let's do that now that is under the actual game properties. I think it's runtime. Or no, it's uh, window properties. We're gonna say resize this. Love it, it's great. <laughs> Just need to change that sound effect to something better. Let's make this game musical. Let me grab a uh, sound effect that's like, I don't know, just an instrument note. Let's we'll think, uh, strings are too slow, so we'll make it piano C chord. 20 minutes later. Change this up a bit. We're gonna have to change it to play on a specific um, channel. We don't want these more than one these to play at a time, so let's do that here. We'll say sample, play sample on a specific channel. And that's the chord, and we'll say channel 32. Uh, and then we will say set the channel frequency. So set channel frequency, that was 32. And we'll say R random, um, and that is like, I don't know, 30,000 to 100,000. Wait, 100,000. Boom. All right, we're gonna just toss these down here. Now that should work, I think. I like that. That's weird, but I like it. Um, hmm. Should we do a random value? A random volume on this? I don't know. Let's add a new group of events. We'll call this init. This is the stuff we're gonna do when we, when we initialize. Start a frame, and I'm just gonna change the um, the channel frequency. No, sorry, the volume of level of volume. Blah. English man is hard. Okay, I'm gonna change the volume of channel 32. It was way too loud, so we're gonna make that 50. That's only gonna be used for the piano sound. Dude, <laughs> I love it. Alright guys, that was Let's Make a Game Episode 1. I hope you found that enjoyable. Uh, I am going to make a few more of these and finish this game. It's not going to be very long, but it's going to be very unusual. And if you have any ideas or you would like to contribute, just get a hold of me. I would love to uh, incorporate your guys' artwork and maybe designs or sound effects or whatever into this little project. Uh, we can make it a group thing. So. Yep, uh, I'm going to try to get back to the tutorials soon. I know I haven't released many. I kind of took almost a one-month hiatus. I'm sorry for that. Just been really busy with a lot of stuff and uh, just wasn't in the cards. But, you know, I will still be making tutorials in the future. So, 
Thanks as always guys for watching and I will see you in the next video.